swim run, we can go. It's fun. We're not worried about times. You're just out, you know, doing something fun. It's competitive. It, you know, have a good race, but you're not worried, fixated on, you know, oh, I'm not as fast as I was 10 years ago. <laughs> Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. I'm Chris, and this is episode 137 of the show. Joining us on the show this week is wife and husband duo of Liz and Jacob Gilden, aka Team Hashtag Batman's Parents. They are a power couple out of Virginia and are headed to Sweden for their first Atala, the Swim Run World Championship. This is a really fun conversation, and we're stoked to share it with all of you. There's multiple swim run power couples out there now. Yeah, including us. We're power. We're I, I power guess couple. we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> training update. So we got in another big, solid week of training this past week. We did have some interesting schedule challenges and rearrangings. <laughs> <laughs> say that. <laughs> so we ended up doing our long swim run that was supposed to be on Saturday. We actually moved it to Friday afternoon down in San Francisco so that Chris could prepare for his son's third birthday party on Saturday, which I attended as well. Yeah. yeah. It was a <laughs> great, great shindig at the park. It was fun. And yeah, I mean, I think uh, after basically starting a four hour swim run at like two in the afternoon, two thirty in the afternoon is not something that I think. Um, Character building. Yeah. We probably wouldn't even been able to do that. I think like a year ago. So if anything, it made me feel pretty good about our training. <laughs> Yes, Atala, just two weeks away now. And, and we were discussing when we were doing this, too. It's like, oh, usually, you know, you get up, you have your coffee or whatever you do in the morning. You're kind of fresh. You haven't depleted your any energy stores yet. But we uh, threw a wrench in it, and we had to try to jam in as much work as we could in, in the morning and afternoon piece, then drove down there. In the, yeah. It was a beautiful day in San Francisco. There was tons of tourists about, so we had a lot of dodging to do there. But... um the, the tide was very high as well, yeah, which was unprecedented was, for the low tide boys, as you might imagine. It's crazy high. It was very high. Now for this week's shout outs. So we've got a Mondo shout out to give this week to the awesome crew at Traverse Fitness in Denver, Colorado. Rob, Sarah, Kellen, Jane, Kate, Timmy, Sarah, and Ben, Josh, Chris, Avery, and Vivian. Um so story, long story short, Rob DM'd us a few months back and told us that he was bringing a big crew of people to Odyssey Swim Run Orcas Island for them to all do their first swim run. So all in all, 22 athletes are making their way to Orcas Island. Awesome. We know. Anyway, we offered to do a Zoom call with them and answer any questions that they might have. And we had that call this past weekend. We had a ton of fun chatting with them. And we're so stoked for their adventure. Um, they're all going to do great. And we can't wait for the post-race Zoom call to get all the race reports from them. But yeah. It was a really was cool a great, group. I mean, I had a lot of fun doing it, totally. but they all obviously are part of this very seemingly close-knit kind of fitness group there. They all had some sort of, oh, I've done anywhere from like a couple 5Ks to, oh, I do tons of triathlons mm -hmm, and everything mm -hmm. in between was like their fitness thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, but yeah, just yeah, so was, awesome. 22 awesome. athletes all going together, renting vans, staying in Airbnbs. I mean, some people do a long course, some people do a short course, some teams, some so I mean the whole Just the whole the gamut. The whole gamut. Yeah, it's awesome. Super stoked for them. Yes. So now on to this week's feats of endurance. So this week's winner is Tobias Ropp of Team Max Mockerman. Life was imitating art when he posted a swim and workout from Bled, Slovenia, where there's a baller lake with a castle on an island. That we used in a meme to make a meme a while while back. Link in the show notes if you want to see that. Strong work, Toby. Now, if you're thinking uh, Team Max Mockerman, that sounds familiar. <laughs> you're right. All the way back in episode 57, we chatted with Team Max Mockerman. So if you want to learn more about them, the team out of Germany, listen in. Episode 57, we will also see them in, at Attila. Yeah, they're doing their first world championship as well. I am... Uh, They've they they they've reached out a few times, multiple times. I'm 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 anticipating almost a full on open field tackle when we first <laughs> see them. They're I think they're very stoked to see us as we are uh, to see them. So uh, great work on that. If you haven't heard of the Low Tide Boys Strava Club, head on over to Strava, search Low Tide Boys. We have 450 plus members now. Something Incredible. Like uh, so go in there. 
dole out some kudos, receive some kudos, kick some conversations off in the in the discussion area, and most importantly, have fun. Kicking it over to Chris for another installment of This Week in Swim Run. All right, we've got a short update for everyone this week. Over in Sweden, the Juni Scottish Swim Run took place this past weekend, and it looked like a warm day out there, unseasonably warm for this time of year. Also in Sweden, the popular Ungalopet Swim Run happened on Saturday and Sunday, and it was great to see so many kids racing with their parents. Um, we also saw a bunch of swim runners racing in Speedos, which just isn't something you see every day. And we're looking at you, George Bialcomo. I did half see of GNP. Half of GNP, uh, the G part. Yeah, yeah, yeah G, G was there. P wasn't. Um, down in South Africa, Torpedo Swim Run have announced their spring, quote unquote, spring, because, you know, it's backwards from us. Uh, their race schedule of Torpedo Val de Vie on October 30th and Torpedo Cape Town on November 20th. They will have seven race distances over the two weekends, so plenty of options for everyone if you happen to be in that hemisphere or want to travel to South Africa. You're tired of whatever winter situation you're facing? Just go to the other hemisphere. There you go. It's the whole Problem opposite solved. season. It's the whole Problem opposite solved. season there. <laughs> That's it for this week. Feel free to reach out and let us know if there's anything that you'd like for us to mention on the show. Well, now for Low Tide Boys updates. So we are getting some plans together for our big trip to Sweden. And we wanted to let everybody know that we're going to be hosting a meetup on Saturday, September 3rd in the evening at a bar, coffee shop, restaurant situation in central Stockholm, location TBD. Come out and say hi, whether you're racing Utsala or not. We'll post more details as we fine tune them. On that note, if you have any suggestions for a great location to host some folks, Shoot us a DM. And then don't forget, Chris and I will be having some special giveaways, if you will. Uh, if you spot us and, and not spot us, if you just say hi in Stockholm, we'll uh, we'll be sure to dole out what we have. Should so we're we come up with a password, to... like uh, Super Stoked or something? I guess that's probably too yeah. easy. Swim run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just, uh, if if uh, the password's low tide, boys. <laughs> hey, are you guys the low tide, boys? Boom, you win. You win. Okay. Uh, yes, now on to our conversation with Liz and Jacob of Team Batman's Parents. Yeah, it was great to chaz with Liz and uh, Chaz. chaz. <laughs> it's great to chaz with them. That's because of Liz with I, the Z. I saw the Z. It moved yeah, right over there. It moved right <laughs> over. It's great to chat with Liz and Jacob. We love their energy and candor about their build to Atala. It was super interesting to also hear about their swim run journey. And, uh, you know, we love hearing these in general, and theirs is a really sweet one. It started all the way back when they would do, they were, they were trying to find a way to do events together as pro triathletes kind of mm-hmm. on the circuit. And Swim Run was a great way for them to tether together and, um, you know, do something like that. And now look at them now. They're at the doorstep of the original Swim Run, the granddaddy of them all. But, They'll be doing it with, with the boys, with us. Yeah. So yeah, they're one of, I think, to. eight American teams heading out there. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, they, we're looking forward to to what they're going to be able to pull off there. And, yeah, we love this conversation. Yes, and we had to early on. We just get it out of the way. You find out where the team name came from. Chris, Chris and I were, I was rocking my mind about it. Yeah, I was totally wrong. Big I mean, DC Batman fans, yeah. what's going on? You'll find out soon. So without further ado. In about two minutes if you keep <laughs> listening. <laughs> Without further ado, let's kick it over to our conversation with Liz and Jacob. Pow! Batman's parents. Hashtag. Please to welcome to the show team hashtag Batman's parents. Liz and Jacob Gilden that are racing the Atala, the Swim World Championship, with us and a hundred and some odd other teams. Yeah. Welcome to the show, guys. Woohoo! Hey. Thank you for having us. Of course. We uh, we ran into you two at, at Casco Bay as well. Uh, you kind of we saw you on course, Liz, after your victory of the solo division 
NBD. Kudos on that one for sure. And then uh, we saw you all at the the happy hour that we had at um, wherever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The little brewery. Yeah. yeah, the brewery place. Must brewery have been, by must the have been water. really good. Yeah. Brewery by the yeah. water in Portland. <laughs> it could be like 12 different places. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. So awesome. Yeah. Well, we won. Should we just get it out of the way? Let's get behind the story behind the uh, the team name, Batman's Parents. Mm-hmm. I just watched a Batman movie last night. I was telling Chris earlier, mm-hmm. but uh, let's hear it. So Batman is just our cat, but he is quite a creature, has a little personality. Um, sometimes we'll play the little Batman music and watch him roam around. And... <laughs> <laughs> the old, um, uh, the the old a- Adam West. So, you know, we did our first swim run in North Carolina before COVID, 2019 yep. and you know they asked what's a team name and we were just like oh i don't know um but then it kind of became a thing so here we are batman's parents nice i love it well in my household we're technically hashtag spider-man's parents because my three-year-old <laughs> he, chipper, he does chipper believe he is spider-man i would say <laughs> it's, ridiculous. it's ridiculous little spidey just webbing everybody strangers <laughs> yeah it's like hi how's it going <laughs> That shoots hmm. you with the spider web. Okay, whoa, whoa, <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's crazy. He's crazy. Nice. Um. So, so let's talk about your swim run journey, right? Like the world championship. That's not for, you know, that's not your beginner swim run. At what point did that become a get get on your calendar? Something you wanted to try to uh, to do, and then kind of take us back all the way to the beginning. Yeah, you want to go? We had done. Um, Casco in 2021 and coming second in the mixed division had a pretty good result. We're pretty happy with how we did. And then won North Carolina in uh, November of that year. Mm-hmm. And we never even thought about Otsula or, you know, trying to go to the world championships or anything. This was, you know, something we did for fun. It was awesome because it was a event we could do together, mm-hmm. um, yeah. which, you know, we've both sort of came into doing endurance sports and triathlon um, where it's very sort of individual event. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no team aspect. There's no sort of, you know, camaraderie about it. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, swim run was something we could do as, you know, as a couple, um, which is pretty unique. Um, so when, after North Carolina in 2020, we sort of, we're looking at the points and we're like, Oh, we're, I think we're going to get an Otsula slot if we want it. Yeah. Um, so then the question became, do we want it? Right. Um, <laughs> I looked at it and it said 42 miles of running. <laughs> but um, I'm always up for anything. So nice. we're going to give it a go. <laughs> yeah. So it, it didn't take much convincing for us to, uh, to put our name in the hat uh, in the ring <laughs> and after the the cold waters of swim run nc you were like well we we can hang with anything at whatever <laughs> got us. Kind, be no kind of what i'm thinking i'm like well i hope it's not any colder than that <laughs> it can't be worse <laughs> Definitely. And it's not steeper either so in many ways it's we it's saw what we better. saw what was going to happen before north carolina and you know it was going to be about 38 degrees at the start um and liz being a meteorologist oh. said you, you know oh. You better be ready for this water because this is going to be the coldest water you've ever swam in. <laughs> and I, we went and bought uh, scuba gloves, uh, oh. which saved us. Sweet. I'm not sure we would have finished the race. With, what without- um, we're we're both gear heads, of course. What uh, thickness uh, neoprene, if you remember? I, uh, I think no they idea. were like. I just had the blue seven. Yeah, like, oh, the blue seven. Yeah, those are those are two. Oh. I were they like Mickey Mouse size, where it's like eight millimeters or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> Mickey Mouse mitts on. I think I had like four, two, okay. three or four millimeter. Yeah, nice. they were. You know, I don't remember my hands being cold. Yeah, it's like well, that's <laughs> good. Mission accomplished. So they worked. <laughs> so they worked. Shivering in other places. <laughs> your face was frozen. You couldn't feel your face, but. <laughs> Everything else was actually okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, now you guys are obviously super accomplished triathletes in your own right. Um, how does kind of coming to swim run and yeah, you're doing it as a couple, something you can do together. Like, is it 
do do you go into it being like, hey, we want to do well here, we want to just have an adventure, and do you see yourself kind of like, I don't mean this in any negative way, but kind of falling into your time trial triathlon race mode when habits. you're when you're racing. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we always show up and want to be competitive, but our skill set is still developing for both trails and open water swimming together. I mean, it's a, it's a different kind of racing and like, we're going to do our best we can at the world championships, but we're not going into it expecting to win, even though we'd like to, but uh, we kind of know that with trails, it's like you become a lot better at them the more you do them. So I could totally see how teams that have done this event over and over again, they're going to know the trails really well. Whereas we're just like, we have no idea what to expect. Yeah, well, you know, that's something we're that, in the same boat. <laughs> that three-time world champion, when we had Adriel on, he was saying it's like, it's, it's just hard for anyone who hasn't experienced this terrain to come in here and like think you're going to dominate because it's such a unique landscape, which is, yeah. you know, from, from, our, from our side of it, we're like, hey, this is just a crazy adventure. Going to try not to roll ankles or bash heads or anything, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's... It's hard, it's hard, it's hard same, to prep for. We're the same mentally. approach on this one. So yeah. this is just a big, long day for us. Yeah. <laughs> I think if it was on, you know, if you put us on a flat road, you know, nothing we could trip over, no rocks <laughs> we could slide on, you know, it'd be a different story. I think we'd be going full out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you put us on a trail and it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> Well, neither of us are very good technical trail runners, so but we're getting better. That part of the sport has definitely been a, a big learning curve. Well, if you keep doing Casco every year, in no time you'll be yeah. you'll be right up there. <laughs> yeah, right yeah up and, there. and so well, running we, too. That, we that, do have some nice trails just a few miles from our house, so we've been running them over and over again. And there's actually a race back there in October, and I'm like, hmm, I think I need to do that race because I know those trails. Yeah. Really well now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny how you develop that that memory. Like, I'm sure at this point, you know exactly what side of the trail you want to be running on and which sections and where's that little route that got you that one time, but it's not yeah. hitting you again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we've also learned a lot about the just the different things that you can wear in swim run. The first time we ever did a swim run, you know, you, we're just tying our old swim buoys and mm-hmm. we don't really care about our paddles, like... Uh, We never even practiced tethering until this summer um, just because we could see how it could be an advantage when we're starting to fatigue. Mm -hmm. Um, But we did go ahead and get the arc and all the latest of the line, greatest equipment. And we're loving that stuff. Um, Still trying to find the right shoe for us. We have tried everything, <laughs> including some of the shoes that you have tried. <laughs> so. Oh, it is a, it is a very a fickle, fickle beast. The shoes are sometimes because, you know, whatever, whatever works for us totally could absolutely not work for, for anybody else for sure. It's kind of, yeah. Whatever, yeah or my example, like what works for me, you can't even get it can't because even I don't anymore. freaking make the shoes anymore. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Those Solomon. So was a challenge. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Let's let's get into a little bit more of, of kind of your history and how you how you first came came around to swim run. You said 2019. I caught that that was your your first one and that was Casco. I assumed uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. For us. Oh, I okay. had actually done one with a friend of mine because she uh, she's a good running friend and she knew I loved swimming. She's like, I think you would love this. So we teamed up and we did it and I was hooked. And so I came home and it was actually, it was the Richmond race, which was the week before North Carolina. And I told Jacob, I was like, oh, we got to do this. It's so fun. And yeah. um, then we signed up and did our first together and he kind of got hooked onto it. Granted, North Carolina is much more run heavy yeah. race, um, which benefits us because Running is definitely our better sport. Um, mm-hmm. I can swim pretty well. He's and a good swimmer. A much we, better swimmer than I am, so kinda, she pulls all the swims. We learned in nice. Casco Bay last year that Jacob needed to swim, so we made sure he swam for this <laughs> upcoming race. For this build. <laughs> I have to actually train. It's unfortunate. but yeah. 
<laughs> and are you guys still doing triathlons and other events while you're kind of building for this? Sort of. So we kind of rely on triathlon training. We're both kind of very injury prone. So okay. as much as we love to go run for hours and hours, we have to respect our bodies and train the way we can train. So mm -hmm. Uh, uh, also our training looks nothing like it used to look. And, you know, that's just a part of getting older and dealing with what you can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, we both come from triathlon background, running background. Um, Jacob's done way more Ironmans than I have, including going to Kona. And uh, I raced professionally since 2012, but I started in short course. So I was actually more of like a short distance mm -hmm. athlete nice. and i've done a couple ironmans but they're hard so <laughs> it's a long day yeah it is a long day similar yeah. to one we're gonna have in a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely. but at least you get for a break me, up the run you know, yeah for me having the longer i've performed well in longer events um like my my best triathlon results have all been in ironmans um okay. which is a little odd like sort of not, not normal that mm -hmm. I tend to run better in nine hour races than I run in two or three hour races. Takes um, a while to get that engine started up, I guess. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like five hours pure, yeah. pure aerobic engine. There's just no need a sick five hour bike ride, loosen my legs up a little bit. I'll be right. on my way. <laughs> Whereas Liz, you know, coming from that short course background where you're going, you know, all out for an hour or two hours, it's just a very different type of yeah. racing. So, so for me, this is, this almost feels like natural Yeah, where you're going sort of at a steady, you know, not particularly hard effort for mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> um, yeah. and the fueling aspect of this is just going to be huge. Like Ironmans, especially and this Otola is just, it's a, it's going to come down to being one, not hurting yourself to, um, fueling, um, and that's something people especially just overlook. Um, totally. Just I mean, huge, that's, huge that's definitely, we're right there with you. Um, what, what are you guys thinking in terms of fueling for the race? I'm hitting up that Swedish Cinnabon that's at age station 16 or whatever yeah. it is. I'm there, <laughs> um, I'm there for every I, Cinnabon. Uh, we both really like the pH products. We definitely yeah. drink the electrolyte stuff and uh, I'm, keen to power bar gels uh, we're both pretty good with like anything goes with our stomachs yep. so hopefully nice. that's the case <laughs> on race day <laughs> the main thing for me is getting enough salt and the main thing for liz is getting enough calories so <laughs> as I long can, as we sort of remind uh, each other that we'll be in we'll be in pretty good I shape maybe this little person but i can eat to beat the bands <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, um, if you're at an aid station and you can't find the cinnamon buns, the word in Swedish is canel bune. That's good so, to know. <laughs> I'm glad Chris so can, can speak for that our, uh... I can speak Duolingo two units worth of kindergarten. <laughs> so. Well, we, we may actually be near you, so I'll just probe you and... Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've actually been trying to tell Chipper like a couple ones, like uh, you know what island we're on and stuff like that, or how to ask for water. The water one, I hope. Yeah, I hope I won't have to use it, but you know, it'll be good to have that one in the back pocket. I think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for for some of your longer races that that you all have been doing, I going back to the to the fuel part. I mean, Chris and I were just kind of talking the other day about. I mean, we've been doing endurance events, triathlon, Ironman, distance, double centuries. You know ultra marathons, you, you name it kind of thing turkey for trots. turkey trots as well, <laughs> um, for eight, 10 years now. And just this year, I finally feel like I kind of understand what it takes to eat or fuel yourself to go such a distance. Um, and it is it's probably you've had more success than me. If you're, if you're having good success at Kona and qualifying for Kona and whatnot, um, is that something you feel like you had dialed in earlier or you just, it just clicked for you early on? I think for, for me, it, it quick, it clicked pretty early. Like I've never, I've only had one really bad long distance race where it was kind of a disaster. <laughs> um, and other than that, I've always, you know, been able to do the, those longer races and sort of fuel that well. Um, Liz, it's always been, 
I feel like at Iron Man, I just, you haven't gotten it right. I just run out of fuel. Yeah. I mm. eat so much. I can't eat enough. <laughs> wow. So, um, but my problem is when it's very hot, I'm a big sweater and getting in that electrolyte is just a challenge. Like when I've done the pH sweat tests, it's like off the charts. Yeah, you, like, <laughs> you like break the machine. Yeah. It's just like pouring. <laughs> so like, you know, North Carolina 2019 when it was 75 degrees and you're running up the side of Moore's wall was a, it was a rough experience, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident we're not going to, we're not going to run into that in uh archipelago yeah you know the weather's been pretty warm the weather has been nice for it has been warm days, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> not getting my hopes up but just uh you know just, i don't know putting it somewhere in my head yeah liz just just let us know what your prediction is you know a couple of days Great. before that's what we'll go uh, definitely oh, she will be i'll be watching <laughs> yeah is there a insider app that we should be using that you all meteorologists <laughs> use that gives us the actual weather or what what should we be doing <laughs> I get asked that question all the time. Honestly, I think the best source is always going to be your local news just because those okay. are the people that know the weather and the climate. The climate has a lot to do with what can impact, say, a pop-up thunderstorm or things like that, mm. um, which you can't sometimes predict using the models. So I'm just going to – I'm just going to – pull rank here and not even consult Chipper on this, but Liz, Uh-oh. would you like to be the official meteorologist of Low Tide Boys' of Swimming Podcast? <laughs> oh, I would love it. <laughs> We've talked about this. <laughs> so in 2019 at North Carolina, there was the reason why it was so hot was because there was this crazy storm coming and they wanted to delay the race. So I went over to the race directors and was like, we need to get this going now. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. Herbert, let's go. Yeah. Fire the gun off. Let's so I, showed, I showed them the radars and the different models and they were like, okay. And so we went off and we were fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, what, a, what a good uh, what a good card to pull. I'm telling like, you. Now, um, that's why I, I had like to ask. Sort of, like, now that's that kind of experience up. like. That typifies swim run that like, you know, one of the participants who's a meteorologist goes up to the race director and says, you know, hey, we need to start the race. And the race director like listens and starts the race. Yeah, like exactly. that would never happen in other sports. No. Right. I mean, that's, that's actually a really good point. I mean, we did a course preview a couple years ago on, um, I forget what course, I think it was Odyssey Austin. And we just made a comment. It's like, oh, so on this run, just watch out because like the aid station is kind of before the swim. So you want to make sure you swim up because it won't be uh, after that. You want to fuel up because after that yeah. swim, you won't have water for, you know, another couple of miles. And the race director heard that and he was like, oh yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So they moved the aid station to after the swim before the long run. And it's just, you know, this was Lars um, yep. and Anger, And it was just like, I mean, it's great that he took that feedback. And he's like, oh yes, that will make the experience better. So, I mean, that's, yep. there's many things. I mean, we can talk all day about how much <laughs> Chipper and I and you guys love swim run, but definitely the fact that it's, it's that small and you can, you can be agile and make decisions that are just going to enhance the experience without having to, you know, contact legal in New York city or something. Totally. Yeah. HQ. Yeah, I love HQ. The, yeah. I love the community. Everyone looks out for each other. I heard, on the pal- on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, you guys said at the world championships, a lot of the teams end up kind of teaming up together. And that's yeah. just so cool. I mean, if you went to Kona, you would never team up with another triathlete. Drafting, yeah. Quit drafting off me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You can't on the bike. And on the run, it's like, you know, you're trying to do psychological last warfare. Ma- last man standing yeah. on that run, I feel like. Just from what I've seen on TV, I have yeah. you know. It seems like a last man standing contest. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think Chipper and I were talking about this the other day. I mean, the world championship, because you're getting so many teams that are all ostensibly kind of trained up for this thing. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a different type of race because there's going to be a lot of people with similar sort of, exp- you know, experience abilities, and abilities. Yeah. Um, so, but actually might be unlike swim runs here, where at least in Chipper, in my experience, we just kind of always end up like kind of no man's land and maybe we're passing some teams but at some point it just kind of spreads out and you're where you're at like it'll be interesting to actually be able to mingle with with other teams and and kind of see what's going on yeah Yeah. hopefully i think that'll be fun we have sort of the same experience of you know after the first hour you're pretty much we pretty much by ourselves um usually you know (laughs) yeah yeah for sure so what what is it 
about swim run that keeps you coming back every year for a couple swim runs here, sprinkle them in with your triathlons? Is it you just, you two love hanging out with each other that much or is it something else? <laughs> Could be both. Uh, well, personally for me, uh, swimming and running are my favorite of, if I had to pick out of triathlon, biking is not my favorite. Like I, I still love biking, but yeah. Swimming and running is where my heart's at. So for me, it's the perfect <laughs> storm. <laughs> ah, um, nice. I think also we've <laughs> on the triathlon front, I think we've kind of maxed out. Like I can't imagine a situation where either of us is going to sort of be able to improve on what we've done in the past just because of our injury histories at this point And yeah. because we're not going to train 25 hours a week, like we used to um, it's just, not in our sort of lifestyle. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, it's swim run. We can go. It's fun. We're not worried about times. Your time means absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. you're just out, you know, doing something fun. It's competitive. It, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a thing we can still go and be competitive and have a good race, but you're not worried, fixated on, you know, Oh, I'm not as fast as I was 10 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, right. I I echo echo those things all the time. I mean, I remember at the, we were, when we were in the triathlon club, it would be oh, you'd finish Vine Man seventy point three or whatever, and you get done, you high five your buddies, and like, what's your bike split? What was your bike split? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, whatever. Of course, I knew it because that's just yeah, you, you know, know it, you know it when they ask. But it is here. It's just like it's like Casco is a is a perfect example. There, it's high fives, and it's like that was awesome. Right. Like everyone yeah. just did the same cool thing that you did and nobody cares how fast you did it. It's exactly. just the fact like, that oh, you did it or you experienced, oh man. How awesome was that there? rock section on Vail going around, yeah. you know, on yeah. around the rocks. That's what it, you know, that's so yeah. cool. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so, something cool and unique. I don't think triathlon is like over, over for us, but it's just not high priority anymore. So yeah. 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 yeah oh. And it's like, you know, triathlon Maybe isn't me, going probably anywhere. Not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, triathlon isn't going anywhere. There's a, no. you know, there's always going to be those events and stuff. I think from the swim run side of thing, of things, what we always try to tell triathletes is like, hey, actually, this will complement your season really well because you yes. kind of get to check yeah. out from feeling like it's a time trial all the time. You're already swimming and biking and running, so you know this could be like the perfect kind of mental break from a, you know, if you're doing some sort of Ironman build or something. But yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we're still biking right now. We're just not biking a ton because we kind of need to have fresh legs to go on a two hour run the next day. Um, but we enjoy, we, we have cycle friends, so if we can go ride with them for a couple hours. There's no harm yeah. done. We're not, we're not doing intervals, but we're just mm -hmm. getting out and enjoying the ride. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, I another thing that I, I've kind of noticed in the more times we do it is, I mean, you're definitely sore the next day and everything, but the totality of it, it's not like, oh, you ran this chunk of 14 miles and then you did a three mile swim like all at once because the it's it's broken up in so many different legs throughout the race. You're able to kind of push at a little bit better pace than you would if you were to pace a, a longer solid oh, yeah, for run. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it kind of definitely gives you more kind of longevity and hopefully that will play in our favor. Exactly. <laughs> I always hear Herbert say that, you know, swim run is not a triathlon with no bike. And I remember right. the first time we did that afterwards, we were like, yes, Herbert, you are a hundred percent right about that. Yep. <laughs> it was a totally different experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you have to think about it more. It's like, Hey, this is a sort of amphibious trail running or sort of adventure racing with yeah. things of two type of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing where people are like, you know, an Ironman isn't two seventy point threes, right? Yeah. It's like its yeah. own full it's Ironman. Totally, it's its own, its own totally animal, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think swim run where where it gets really interesting. I mean, this is going to be same same as you guys. This is going to be the longest swim run in terms of just total distance we've ever done by by a decent amount, yeah. by at least like twenty miles, several several <laughs> hours. So 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 I'm curious how you guys are are kind of like. You know, maybe you haven't thought about it, but if you have thought about it, how are you kind of breaking that up in, in your in your mind in terms of how you're going to approach this thing? Uh, well, I heard on the podcast, 
think it might have been Helen from ARC uh, talking about kind of breaking the race into three based on the islands. Yep. And I really liked that. Um, I actually coach Jacob. <laughs> so he has to listen to me. Um, <laughs> so that goes well with our partnership though, because we kind of know each other's highs and lows. So we can pick up on it. He can see like if I'm starting to fade a little bit or I'm getting quiet, something like that. Uh, but I talked to Jacob about how the first couple hours of the race we've just heard are like really slow. And for us who like to go really fast, we, ha we need to be patient with it and mm -hmm. not freak out and just like mm -hmm. keep getting through it. And eventually we'll get through it. <clears throat> I think I'm actually most nervous about when we finally get to the section that we can run, how do we feel like 30 miles into this race? Right. Um, yeah. To just throw down a half marathon. Yeah, or are you about to make like a really bad decision on something? <laughs> so as long as we're, we're doing our fueling the way we talked about and checking in with each other, uh, so much of it is just being kind to each other, being supportive, reading each other's emotions and yeah. getting through the day. Yeah, that's that's very similar feedback, kind of the first bit of the race too. I mean... If you're trying to win it, yeah, you got to you got to give a gas on that first part. But if you're trying to survive it, you just kind of take that that piece, take it yeah. take it easy. Yeah, and Get I and it. I think you know even beyond that, it's like, hey, if this is your first time doing it, don't try to win it. <laughs> yeah. Seems to be like the be like the best advice. I mean, yeah, I think breaking it up into thirds, that's kind of the way I, I'm trying to digest it as well. Um, you know, we've had guests like Jonas who's like, don't even write it on the paddles. It's too much to write. You're not even going to know where you are anyway. So if you can have some major landmarks, mark up some of the, like, the big swims, the big sort of, I guess, seminal points in the race. Um, to orient yourself, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So I actually did some Strava stalking and Ooh. went into past winners files and just looked nice. at the breakdown of the pacing and granted maybe that was like that was fast pacing so i already have it in my mind like okay so we might not be at mile seven until two two and a half hours into this race just mm -hmm. just like looking through mm -hmm. files and so that sometimes that helps us prepare too because we kind of know what to expect yeah or have a range of an expectation that's a good that's a good idea. And I believe on the Attila site they actually like on the leg by leg little table that they have built out, they have like a range. fast time and then like that's right. slow or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're somewhere in between those, I think that'll be good cuz you know the, nothing would sort of be uh more deflating than you you're however long on and you're like what we're two hours in and we're only covered X amount of thing and your, your expectations yep. are off. I mean, that could really be deflating to, uh, to, to your, to your race there and something to come back from, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But if you, if you have it sorted, then, you know, right. you know, what so for us, I think that was something that was super important. Just kind of knowing, because obviously we can't know anything any, about this race since we've never been there, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's also, too, like, um, the whole race, and swimming in general, I think it's almost like an exercise in mindfulness and just being present, right? Like, you have to take what comes to you. You have to respond to the to whatever scenarios come up, rough water, currents, whatever. You have to check in with your partner. You have to be kind. <laughs> I mean, you should be kind anyway, but, you know, especially <laughs> in a stressful situation, you should be kind. Um, and it's it's just... You know, it's all, it, it, in many ways, it can be kind of like a spiritual kind of meditative thing um, that you share with someone while at the same time, it's still super hard. So I'm curious. Yeah, you have this in your mind. You have like, OK, breaking it up into thirds and stuff like that. Like, how are you thinking about it in terms? We already talked about like pace, like you guys are going to try to run where you can and do all that stuff. But um, where do you think during the race that you guys are going to try to like turn up the gas to kind of see what you're capable of? I think it's if if we're feeling good, feeling good. <laughs> and we're properly fueled and we're you know high enough energy. Obviously, for us, we we've, we've never done any ultra running, so mm -hmm. 
farthest either of us have ever run is 26.2 miles. Um, and I don't think either of us have ever finished a marathon and said, I really just want to keep running more. <laughs> um, so the, you know, we're going into the unknown here, just, you know, on a whole bunch of different levels. Um, but I think that, you know, that 13 mile stretch, if we're going to, you know, do damage anywhere, it's going to be, you know, a 13 mile, you know, less technical single track type run. Yeah. Like I think at Casco in 2021 on the long run there, we had, I think the fastest run time of any, any team male or female. Um, nice. So if you get us on, you know, some, some solid ground that we can like run on, I think we'll, you know, we'll be in good shape. Um, right, right, the main right. thing is for, that we're worried about is, you know, getting through those technical section, getting through um, the rocky sections with our ankles and feet all intact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Staying upright. That's the yeah. pro tip. For Rubber side down for us. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. And how are you, uh, Liz, how are you feeling about some of these uh, swims out in the Baltic where we're going to be doing swimming de- your, your um, open water? No problem for you. Uh, I mean... I'm pretty comfortable open water swimming. I, I, I actually swim better open water than I do in the pool. So it doesn't scare me. Um, we actually were in Casco Bay just last weekend and we did a little swim run practice and the tide was starting to push in. So I took over and I I told Jacob, I was like, I'm going there and just hang on. And so we went and we looked <laughs> nice. at the file and it was like a beeline straight ahead. Like it was perfect. Nice. So I just do, got to do what I usually do. Um, I do remember also in Casco Bay 2021, when we did enter the water with other groups, it was much easier to just like swim where you're supposed to be going. So hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to be around some, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, and, and th- I think that'll just be fun too, especially if there's you know people that actually know where they're going. <laughs> like you're saying, you know, like get on some feet, yeah, and, and just kind of go for at least on some of those swims, just go for a tour. Yeah, take, we we both just now. ordered a fresh pair of goggles today to arrive before the race because we always like to have a new fresh pair of goggles before we go to race day. That's a good. What's your What's your go to goggles? Oh, I use all kinds. Um, we both rock in a pair of blue seventies for the race. <laughs> nice. Gotcha. NR twos or something but, like that. But, I don't even think they make them anymore. Um, oh. I think we, that's both what we normally swim in. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And then you said you got, you got arc suits. Yep. Arc uh, suits, arc buoys. We got the carbon paddles. Oh, nice. you're, oh, you're ready, ready to go. go. <laughs> yeah. Man, Isn't it gear. great when you could just, you know, race is coming up you just start throwing money at the problem <laughs> like this should totally. help. <laughs> i mean the stuff is fast it's, yeah. it's nice. <laughs> i think i pulled yeah. out the, the carbon paddles and my buddies who were college swimmers are like blew their minds um, <laughs> that like yeah. such a thing one that such a things exists and two that you know me who's not a very good swimmer would buy them <laughs> <laughs> nice it's hilarious for for the your open water you, you said you're better in open water than the pool I, one, I like that. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I wish I could say something like that. I can't though. Uh, do, are you one of these one of these swimmers that can? Oh, if the, it's more choppy on the wave, you go with the higher higher elbow exit, or I don't. That might be the wrong thing to do, but you can adjust your stroke mechanics yeah. to. I always talk to Jacob about that okay. too when we're swimming. Like, oh, look, we're going into this chop. Uh, make sure to keep your cadence up. Um, which is a little different when you have paddles on, but regardless, yeah. it's a good reminder of different things you can do when the current or the waves are getting strong. Liz is also good at, one, she's a good cider. Two, you can bilateral breathe pretty mm-hmm. well. Um, yes. So we're, we're in choppy water. She definitely is the one. Yeah, not, not totally me. breathing into the swell. and just Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You're taking on enough uh, salt water as it is. I don't. I think that's you know pro triathlon swimming is a you know is very different. Is totally different than age group swimming. Yeah. You know, it's from the gun. It's a full on race, and it's a you know if you're not making that pack, you're left in the dust for the next two hours. So Liz has that you know 
experience of doing that, you know, to make a living for 10 years. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, you gotta be able to get off the line and get off the line fast in you know, any conditions. So she you know, mix it pretty, up. pretty much excels at that. It's awesome. That's, well, you're lucky. Sounds like you a, found a good a teammate, sw- buddy. <laughs> swim leader. <laughs> Drags me along. <laughs> Which we had to learn, though, because, like I said, we never tethered before. Um, and we learned in Casco Bay when I hear Jacob yell out to me, loose, slow, down. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn around and I'm like, whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've been trying to practice a little bit with that. <laughs> But he's also trained up now, and he's swimming the best he's ever swam. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Wow. That's, that's to keep I mean, those I, feet. Speaking for myself, I'm also trained up and swimming yeah. at the best I can, I think. I don't think <clears throat> I've been this strong in the water oh, yeah. in oh. years, in years. So it's, I, th- I think, awesome. you know, we've, we've said this since like episode one. What makes swim run more fun is having really good swim fitness because then the swims, none of the swims become like these ordeals, yeah. these stressful yeah. things. Um, so that's great that, that you're, that you're trained up for it. Um, have you guys been able to, I know you just said you went to Casco to kind of do some workouts. Have you been doing sort of like longer kind of super technical hill tra- or trail running or swim runs with transitions in and out of rocks and stuff to, to get ready or do you even have that available where you are? Yeah. Uh, we're, we've kind of been late in our training, I guess you could say, um, work since we're balancing what our bodies are capable of, uh, one, also the summer here in Virginia is just brutal humidity. So Mm. you run for too long, you just run really, really bad and can potentially hurt yourself even more. So we've actually kind of been, uh, chopping the weekends up where like one weekend we'll do that swim run routine, practice our transitions, things like that. And then the other weekend we do the long run. Nice with a swim or something else. Um, but we've been trying to kind of balance it the best we can. I, uh, I also tore my labrum in my hip in May. Um, which I didn't sort of, we didn't sort of diagnose what it was until sort of July timeframe. Um, so I've been able to run through it. Um, but I have to be very careful about what I'm doing, how fast I'm going, how far I'm going. Yeah. Um, so we did 13 today on technical trails. Um, and that was the longest I've run in six months. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to be able to go do the three hour runs. I feel like I need to do, but I just can't do it. So you go with, yeah. you go with what you have. Yeah. And yeah. And I think doing a lot of biking and yeah. swimming. Exactly. Super I mean, deep base. <laughs> sounds like you got a lot of miles in the bank too. Yes. Yeah. Our aerobic fitness is great. You know, you, I always tell my athletes, I coach a bunch of triathletes that like, if you go into say an Ironman or something and you actually feel prepared, then maybe you're overtrained. <laughs> so I'm going on that mentality where like, we're going into this, like a little undertrained, but we have lots of experience and lots of years in our legs. Right. It's one of those things that, you know, it's the way it is and we're going to do the best we can, but it's it. more important to come in and able to do the race than try to yeah. You know, yeah. squeeze yeah, out you wanna... training that my body's not capable of and we don't even make it there. So yeah. we're yeah. trying to, trying to balance that. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. You want to, you want to be able to be on the start line and, and ready to go, not uh, laid up, <laughs> not able to be there. So uh, yeah. great point. Yeah. We've, We've adjusted our training a little bit this year. I mean, I think last year we felt like we needed more um, more reps sort of of swim run, like mm. f- getting the transitions really dialed in, getting sorting out how we're going to be following on swims and runs and working with the tether and stuff. And this year I feel like we kind of were like, okay, we're, we're good on the reps. So we've also been taking a little bit of the approach, sounds like that you all have, of – uh, we'll to do maybe like one swim run practice a month, but then longer kind of trail runs um, yeah. on the weekends, you know, just getting up in the hills here in, in, in Marin. So we're, uh, you know, we're spoiled with plenty of <laughs> plenty of ways to punish ourselves. Yeah. On yeah. the trails here. We did a, uh, we did a little training camp out in Bend, Oregon um, ah, June. in June. That'll do it. 
and, you know, just amazing trail running. Um, We swam like 23 or 24 K the week we were there. Um, Nice. Just, uh, (laughs) it was awesome. Um, I wish we could do that in Virginia in the summer, but we would just Die. destroy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we have the heat training aspect. Like yeah. some people go to altitude, we got the heat training. Right. Yeah, um, we got a little bit of that here too. <laughs> yeah. Not so, the humidity piece, just hot. Just, just we hot. have actually been kind of like dedicated swim run training though from about June on. Whereas in the past when we've done these swim run races, we just go into it with like, all right, we've done our triathlon training. Like, let's go do the mm-hmm. swim run. So it's definitely a a little different. Like we are practicing the transitions. We're buying the gear. Like we're taking it a little bit more seriously, but Mm -hmm. ultimately we're still kind of training like triathletes, but with the swim run focus. (laughs) So, so let me ask you, so you're doing this world championship. It's first European race swim run. Um, Same for us. So we're all of us here are super stoked just for that aspect, just to do something over there. Oh yeah. Um, what what are you expecting from the experience other than, you know, sort of outside of the, you know, eight to 14 hours it takes to, to do this thing? Um, eight for the winners, right? I'm not, you know, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like outside well, of that time, like, well, like what, what are you looking for? Yeah. We, exactly. no, we, we think like on 10 to 12. 10 to 12. <laughs> yeah, 10 to 12, that sounds perfectly reasonable. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so sort of outside of that 10 to 12 range, what are you hoping to get from this experience? Uh, fika. We love coffee. <laughs> and I'm with you. Right there with you. <laughs> um, I think just like the uh, interacting with all the teams before the race, like what other race puts you up in the hotel, like with every other team before and after the race? Like how cool is that? Um, so I think that part we're looking forward to as much as anything. Um and just, yeah. you know, spending a week in Stockholm um, looks like an amazing place and we're super excited to go. I think it's always really cool to go into these races like you think you're all fast and fit and then you just get destroyed by these Swedes that are amazing mm-hmm. technical runners and swim super fast. And I'm always just like blown away. I'm like, oh my God, how did they do that? Like an hour faster than us or like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's cool. Like um, we've done a couple of triathlons in Europe and even when we do triathlons there, we were always blown away by how fast the Europeans would bike down these mountains and things like that. So <laughs> um, it's just, it's cool. It's a cool experience. This is definitely the highlight of our year. We've kind of been, this is our awesome. big trip and. It's yeah, be fun. Well, we can't wait to be there with you. We're we're not too far away. It's getting here. It's getting it's here. Close. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming up. It's close. Coming up. Woo. Well, you guys, thank you so much for spe- for spending some time on the show. Great to introduce you to our listeners, and you know, yet another of the I think like seven or eight American teams that that, that are going out there. Yep. So yep. it's going to be really fun. We'll have to take a group picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who has the yeah. longest arm for a good selfie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get one of the seven-foot Swedes to take the photo for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, best of luck in your training leading up to the last couple of weeks. And, yeah, hope to see you healthy and happy at the start line. Thanks, guys. Likewise, looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We'll see you there. And anytime, Fika, you just text me. And once I get my international <laughs> plan, I'm we'll there. there. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. <laughs> Chris will right. get Chipper is something. gonna just be up for like I'm gonna just, 72 <laughs> hours. He's gonna just twenty four hours. Today. It's like no, <laughs> shut him off from the fika. No more fika for you. Put he on seven pounds. I like keep just eating croissants and whatever other delicate. <laughs> yeah, you know. cannon Yeah. Whatever he said. Yeah. Give me one give me two of those actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm, so good. Yeah, I'll have all the food stuff dialed in for us. So, you know, Perfect. I'll, I'll I'll get us going on that side. And the Twix bar <laughs> after the pigs one. I'm looking forward to that too. But cool. All right, guys. Well, right. we'll see you in Stockholm then. All right. All right. Likewise. See ya. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the support of Swim Run. 
Sign up for our newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any suggestions for the show or questions for us, send us a DM or an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of all our swim run activities, podcast, and other stuff. Yeah, other stuff. Other way stuff. To, way to keep it PG. Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Go for a run. Then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then another run. And then just keep going. Until you're done. Until you're done. Or maybe can't stop stop. all stuff. (laughs)